behind, behind me now just to be sure. The hike this week will take me into both Banff National Park in Alberta and Kootenai National Park in British Columbia. I'll start from a parking lot on the Banff Radium Highway just east of the BC Alberta border. I'll hike south along the Highline Trail for two days and then head west into Kootenai National Park and down into the Hawk Creek Valley and out to a parking lot at the Flow Lake Trailhead. The weather forecast looks really good, warm days and some cool nights. So the bugs should be gone. Hopefully it'll be great hiking. Come on, let's go. I'm just standing on a small rock slide above Vista Lake, looking up at Storm Mountain. And once I reach the uh, lake, I'll contour around the far side and then head up and over that ridge and then down to Twin Lakes campsite for the night. And now begins the climb, about 2,200 feet, I believe, up to the ridge that comes down from Storm Mountain and then over the ridge down to Twin Lakes. Here's a view looking back at Vista Lake. Above it you can see the Banff Radium Highway. Hello you guys. I found some visitors on the trail. Although I guess I'm the visitor. Well, look at you. Didn't see you. I'm coming up on Arnica Lake through the trees here. You can see it. It's about 5.30 in the afternoon, so it's been almost two hours. Coming up from the trailhead, five kilometers up. And I still got a ways to go. I still got about uh, another kilometer or so. Just take you down to the shoreline here. Beautiful. I just saw and heard some rock fall up on Storm Mountain. And I'm just about to leave the lakeshore. I'm going to climb up over this ridge. Shouldn't take too long. This is a beautiful time of day. Still a clear blue sky. It's going to be cool tonight. Here's an official looking Banff National Park trail sign. And then a <laughs> kind of a homemade one. Well, there's not much to mark that I've made it to the ridge, but uh, other than the views are both ways now. So I figure probably about 45 minutes down into Twin Lakes Camp, so I'm just going to take a break for five minutes. I have arrived. Whew. So I'll just go find a campsite, set up camp real quick, and then get supper going. Pizza on the on the outback oven. All right, this is just about ready to go in the oven, and 10 or 15 minutes later should be done. This is the view behind me as I'm cooking pizza tonight. <laughs> 
This is evening at Storm Mountain, and that's Upper Twin Lake, about 100 meters from us. And this is the kitchen area. So this is dinner, a little late. It's pushing, uh, well, it's probably eight o'clock at least by now, but better late than never. Well, good morning. It's day two. Pretty lazy morning. Just getting started. Cool night, but I slept well. I think the forecast was uh, plus one, so basically freezing. Th about 33 Fahrenheit. So I've got to climb this morning over Gibbon Pass. Should be fairly easy. And then down to Shadow Lake Lodge for a break, maybe lunch. And then on to Ball Pass Junction campsite. And I think the forecast uh, today is about the same. I think it's about 21 Celsius, so about 70 Fahrenheit. Another beautiful blue sky morning. This is the bridge over the outlet stream from Lower Twin Lake. I'll cross this and uh, contour around the lake and up above to Gibbon Pass. And here's a nice view of Lower Twin Lake. I found a friend. It's a marmot. And uh, I saw him disappear into the hole just as I was coming by on the trail above him. And I blew my little emergency whistle. And he came out of the hole to have a look. And he's got a pretty nice view. Here's a couple of hippie on a stick, or hippies on a stick, plural, also known as the Western Anemone. It's the first I've seen of these guys on the trail so far. I expect to see a few more. So just when I said I expect to see a few more hippies on a stick, I go another 100 meters <laughs> and it's a party. Hippies everywhere. I'm just coming up on some signage now, so I gather this is the pass, Gibbon Pass. Yeah, there it is, there's a cairn. So 7,500 feet. That wasn't a bad climb at all much easier than yesterday. And the views to the south are awesome on this blue sky day. Looking back, not too bad either. So from my notes, this cairn at Gibbon Pass honors John Murray Gibbon. He was an author and Canadian Pacific Railway publicist who helped establish the trail riders of the Canadian Rockies in 1924 and the Skyline Hikers in 1933. And he was a promoter of the Bow Valley Highline Trail and other long distance trails in the Canadian Rockies. And he rode over this pass with trail riders in 1929. From the pass, on a clear day, just like today, you can see Mount Assiniboine to the south, 40 kilometers away, or about 25 miles away. Mount Assiniboine is 11,870 feet high. This is where I've come from. And this is where I'm going, down, down, down to the junction at Shadow Lake Lodge. And uh, lunch stop somewhere down there and then about four kilometers or about two and a half miles 
to the campsite at Ball Pass Junction. That's a tree. So those cabins back there are the Shadow Lake Lodge complex. Uh, beautiful spot, beautiful open area, uh, open meadow. Lots of good views, beautiful log cabins. This is Shadow Lake. I'm going to stop for lunch here. And then I've got about four kilometers or about uh, two and a half miles to the campsite. This is Mount Ball. To the left is Ball Pass, which I will climb tomorrow morning and head over and then down to the Banff Radium Highway and my car. Just a few clouds, beautiful day, light breeze, really, really nice spot. This would be, I believe, Hyduck Creek as it flows down into Shadow Lake. Well, I've got to slow down for a minute. I just came down with a nosebleed, so nothing serious. Doesn't seem too bad. Did you know if you have a nosebleed and somebody punches you in the bottom of your foot, opposite the nostril that's bloody, that it should stop the nosebleed or slow it down? Well, this is Ball Pass Junction campsite, or officially RE21. Campsite number two is the chosen one tonight. It's a nice spot. I've camped here twice before. It's got a really neat mountain up there, looking over the valley here. And then it kind of opens up to a, to a meadow um, over the creek. Food storage and the kitchen area is way down here so just makes it that much further for the bears to walk which I guess is a good thing so here's the meadow adjacent to the campsite nice spot time for happy hour with my new friends Good morning, it's day three. I'm just at the base of Ball Pass. Ball Pass, I've got about 500 feet, about 150 meters of elevation. Thankfully, it's short, but it's pretty steep. Uh, a bunch of switchbacks, it goes up through the rock. I hiked this trail last year, and I hiked it in the early 2000s with uh, three buddies, Marty and John and Johnny K. I hope to be at the pass probably in about half an hour, 45 minutes. Take a break and then I've got 10 kilometers or about six miles down along Hawk Creek to my car and that's parked at the Flow Lake Trailhead parking lot on the Banff Radium Highway. And this is what I'm looking at. So this young couple that was sharing the campsite with me the past two nights, they got talking to me about my interest in backpacking and I told them that in 1978, I worked at the Chateau Lake Louise on the shores of beautiful Lake Louise in Banff National Park. And I worked on the night audit team. So I would work through the night with my team and then I would usually get done about four in the morning, go back to the room, sleep till noon, get up, and if I felt like it, I'd do a day hike, short day hike in the area. Lots of beautiful hiking around Lake Louise. Or on my days off, I'd go for a longer hike 
with other staff. And uh, from that I got interested in backpacking and have been doing it ever since. I told them my grizzly bear in the hotel story, which uh, I won't tell you guys because I hope to organize my neighbors into doing a day hike at Lake Louise in the coming weeks and hopefully if we can get that organized I thought I would tell you then because it would be a little more appropriate. So now I'm looking back at Shadow Lake Lodge. And the valley that I've come up, up here, this is Isabel Peak. And then adjacent to that is Mount Ball. And this is all the rock that I've come through the past few minutes. Ball Pass is just up ahead. I'm, I'm uh, probably five minutes, if that, from the pass. So a minute and a half later, I am officially at Ball Pass. And this is the boundary of Banff National Park and Kootenai National Park. It's also the British Columbia Alberta border. So now I've got a downhill of about uh, 10 kilometers or a little over six miles. And I've got about 900 meters to go downhill or uh, about 2,900 feet. I almost forgot to uh, tighten up the laces back there, so I stopped and snugged them up. I've been known to lose the odd toenail in the past, and I really don't want to lose any <laughs> anymore. So here we go. This is the first trail cam I've seen on this hike. This is the view of Hawk Creek Valley as I make my way down to the highway. That burn that you see, the top of the burn nearest me is five kilometers or about three miles from the highway. So uh, I don't have a GPS with me on this hike, but I'll have a pretty good idea once I reach that of how far I have to go. I'm looking back up at Ball Pass and uh, down I've come. I'm just steps away from entering the burn. And this was uh, from 2003, the Verondry Creek fire. And I remember that the fires were so bad in the, in the mountain parks, Banff, Kootenai, Jasper, that one of the only hikes we could do, uh, buddies and I, was in Kananaskis in Alberta. Here's the edge of the burn, and it's interesting to see the regeneration of the forest and how slow these trees grow, these lodgepole pines. So these pines would be 17 years old. That's the trail that I just came down from and the one issue with the uh, forest fire is the weakened trees and they'll blow over from a strong wind. Pretty tough for Parks Canada to maintain this trail, keep it clear. I mean some of these trees could have fallen over yesterday. There's a bear right above me in the trees, well in the grass. He knows I'm here, I made noise.
Well, that was interesting. I had just made some noise. I got an emergency whistle. I blow it every now and then when I'm walking through brush. And I just made noise. And a few seconds later, I heard this weird noise kind of up above me. So I stopped, looked, and there was something behind a bush up above me. I'm looking behind, behind me now, just to be sure. Uh, there was something up above me uh, kind of up above this bush and it wasn't moving and at first I just thought it was a rock uh, like a big boulder then it moved and I realized it was a bear so I uh, got the bear spray out got the camera out and uh, tried to take a real quick video uh, the priority was was the bear spray getting the bear spray it was probably 50 yards above me and uh, It knew I was there because uh, it, it uh, took off running up the hill away from me. So thankfully for that. I can hear the highway noise, but the views are pretty limited in this burn. The trees are all 10 or 15 feet high. So uh, kind of boring in here, other than that bear sighting back there. So I thought it was time for a joke. And this one comes from the movie Capricorn One. Uh, I love movies. Um, Capricorn one I really enjoyed. It's about a space mission, a manned space mission to Mars, and all of it is fake, which really makes you go, hmm. And the three astronauts are James Brolin, O.J. Simpson, and Sam Waterston. In the middle of it, Sam Waterston is trying to get away from the bad guys. And he tells this joke. So there's this guy, and uh, he lives by himself, and he has a cat, and he wants to go on vacation, but he's worried about his cat. So his brother says, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it for you. So the guy thinks, oh, this is awesome. So he goes away on his vacation. And a few days later, he phones his brother just to check in, and he says, so how's the cat? And his brother said, the cat died. Well, of course, the guy's all torn up about it and sad. And then he says to his brother, he says, you know, you really shouldn't have told me that way. You should have stretched it out. You should have said, the cat got out of the house and he got up in this tree, this really tall tree, and you couldn't reach him. You got the neighbors to try and help with a tall ladder and you just couldn't get up there and the cat got higher and higher in the tree so you guys called the fire department and the fire department sent out their aerial ladder and the truck came and they stretched the ladder as high as they could up into the tree and the firefighter went up in the tree and just as he was about to reach the cat the cat jumped over onto the roof of the house but when he jumped over to the roof, he hurt himself really badly. And so by the time the firefighters got over to the roof of the house, they discovered that the cat had died. And they tried everything. They tried resuscitating it. They tried CPR. They tried everything. Nothing worked. The cat died. You should have told me like that. And his brother thought, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I should have said something like that. So they keep chatting. A minute or two later, the guy says to his brother, so how's mom? And his brother says, she's on the roof. Back to civilization. The parking lot at the Flow Lake Trailhead where my car is, it's about 400 meters down the highway, on the other side of the highway. So the trail just continues on this side through the trees. And then I'll cross the highway shortly and be at the parking lot. As always, I want to thank you for hiking along with me. I know there's a lot of YouTube content out there and I appreciate you taking time to watch this. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button and Share it with friends and subscribe for more videos.
The hike this week will take me into both Banff National. The hike this week will take me into both Banff National Park in Alberta and and. Well, look at you. Didn't see you. It's kind of like a Jurassic Park trick. The old distraction ploy.